Okay, now let's extend our example to pass a value to our function. Okay, now in this particular case, we have passed no values, okay? So we, we just called that function, and it just fired that dialog message box. Now we're going to add an element where we're going to pass a name to this function so that it can customize the greeting. So for this particular case, we're just going to add, in the brackets here, of the function declaration, the word name. Now what this is, is a variable that we're declaring at this point. So you can name it anything you want, but you need to keep track of it. As always, the best thing to do is name it something meaningful. Okay, so we've got our dialog message box here. Now instead of saying hello world, we're going to go ahead and eliminate where it says world, and we're going to concatenate on the variable name. Alright, so whatever name is passed to this function is going to be displayed as part of this dialog message box, okay? So we're passing a value to the function. And you can see the relationship here between the variable name that we've declared to be passed to the function and here where we've used it inside the function. All right, let's go ahead and press OK. And then here where we're calling our function hello, we now need to pass a value to our function. And that value is going to be uh, passed internally into the function as the variable name. So in this particular case, let's go ahead and add John to our function call and then we'll go ahead and preview our project by pressing F5. I'm going to minimize our application and we'll go ahead and click on our button. As you can see here, well, I forgot to put the space in, but we've got the greeting, Hello John. Okay? So we'll press OK. I'm going to go ahead and close down the application and we'll go ahead and broaden the scope of this a little bit more. Now, for this particular example, we've passed one value. We've passed the value name. Let's go ahead and pass a second value. We're going to declare inside these brackets here a new variable called day. And we'll say hello. And we've got the name variable. Now we're going to go ahead and concatenate on another string where we put in a period and we say have a great. And then we're going to concatenate on the day. Alright, so in this particular case, we're doing the same thing we did in the last example, except we're adding a new value. So we're passing values instead of a value. Okay, let's go ahead and press OK. And then we'll go ahead here and add a second value to our function call. So here where we're calling our function, instead of just adding the name, now we need to add a day as well. So I'm going to say John, and then I'm going to say Tuesday. We'll go ahead and run this by pressing F5. I'm going to minimize the application. And here we go. I'll click on my button. As you can see, it says, Hello, John. Have a great Tuesday. Now, this is a super simple example of how to do this. But again, the whole concept here is that we want people to be able to use functions confidently. And the best way to do that is to really break it down to the smallest base elements. So let's examine what we did. What we did was we added a couple of variable names to the function declaration, in this case name and day. And then those variables now we can use within our function. Now when we called our function, if you'll recall, we passed a couple of values. We passed first the name and then the day. Those were being assigned these variable names as they came into the function. And we used those in our dialog message box and you could use them in any action. Now let's take a look at what happens if we reverse these variables, for example. If I reverse day and name, and then we go ahead and run our project again, what do you think is going to happen? We'll go ahead and click our button. As you can see, it says, Hello Tuesday, have a great John. Now, we didn't change our function call. The function call is exactly the same, but what we did was we changed the order of those variable names. So you can see how they're correlated to the function call and the order in which the variables are passed. Okay, so if we pass the name first and then we pass the day, then we need to, of course, make the corresponding uh, correlation when we're declaring the function. So let's go ahead and get rid of our application. We'll go back here to our project global functions area and switch those back. So since we are passing them in that order, we need them to be in that order when we call the function. So for example here, if we had said name, day, employee number, then when we were calling this function, we would need to pass that extra variable as the third variable. Okay, so I think that's pretty well explained that. Let's go ahead and close that down and take a look at the function call one more time. 
Okay, as you can see here, we just call the function by typing in its name. So that's why I say in that sense we're creating our own custom actions. And then we pass these couple of values. Now you can pass numerical values, string values, anything you like. But the whole point is that you're passing values in a comma form. So you would say, uh, for example, if you're going to put in an employee ID thing, you might say that. And then you might have another value of uh, a price or something and so forth. You can pass as many values as you want. But the point is that you're going to ha have to uh, accept those values into your function accordingly. So if you're going to pass two values, you need to have your function declaration set up to accept two values, and you need to properly assign variable names to those values so you can use them within your functions, as we did here, where we assigned the name and the day to our greeting phrase. Okay, so that's how you pass values to functions in Autoplay Media Studio. Let's take a look at the next video.